Welcome to Realizing Research. I am Samantha Deal, and today I'm talking about why scientists don't like Neuralink. If you haven't been following the news, you're probably wondering what is Neuralink. Neuralink is a microchip that is supposed to be implanted into your brain in order to allow a computer brain interface, at least ultimately that is the goal. This is a company that's ran by Elon Musk and he's primarily interested in this because he believes that AI will advance to a degree that they will be competitive with humans and then outpace them. He has tweeted out that the Neuralink mission statement is if you can't beat them, join them. People in general are pretty excited about the company and part of that is because of the hype around Elon Musk. He's kind of an engineering and marketing genius. He has turned Tesla into a household name. He has turned SpaceX into commercial space exploration and hopefully will be sending people to Mars in, I don't know, 20 to 30 years. That that being said, scientists have been a little bit lackluster in their uh, thoughts about Neuralink. So why are these scientists not more excited? First, I want to say why am I the one that you should be listening to? I am a later stage PhD student who is working in neurobiology and neurological diseases. So I do have enough background knowledge to get the gist of the science behind this. That being said, I'm not an expert. And in fact, because I'm not an expert, I am not wholly invested in the academic research of this neuroscience. I am also kind of a giant sci-fi and fantasy fan. The idea of a brain computer interface sounds like it's something straight out of Blade Runner and Minority Report, and it sounds kind of exciting and cool. I think because I'm somewhere in this middle ground, it allows me to be a decent, unbiased and middle ground perspective. In order to understand a little bit about what's going on here, you need to understand that academia and industry research can often butt heads. And the reason for this is because they have two very different goals. Fundamentally, academia wants to pursue knowledge and fundamentally, industry wants to make profit. And if we're completely honest about it, academic researchers have always kind of assumed a moral or ethical high ground because we're not in it for profit. That being said, if you ask the industry, what are you actually providing to people? It's a lot more complicated for academics to answer that question. They can say that they are actually treating people. Now, don't get me wrong. In the process, both of them do great things and they advance society. It's just that their fundamental goals are different. But why specifically Neuralink? Thus far, the science from Neuralink is not incredibly exciting. I know that that may sound shocking to some people, but the only thing that we have seen come from Neuralink is the technology, which is amazing, and we'll get to that. Then there is also the display where Elon Musk brought out several pigs. He showed that one pig that was completely healthy and you saw its behavior, and then he brought out another pig that had the microchip placed and removed, completely healthy, behavior seemed normal. And then the last pig had a microchip placed and you could see its behavior seemed normal. And in addition, you could actually see the recording from the electrodes with within the microchip from the brain. And this sounds really exciting to people who are not used to looking at the electrophysiology, which is actually where you record with electrodes from brains. Most people in neuroscience know that this has been going on for decades. So this is not something that is wholly exciting. In addition to that, there wasn't any real talk of what the information really looks like from these 1,024 electrodes. How are you taking advantage of this data and understanding what's actually happening? So that is interesting science, but just seeing responses from 1,000 electrodes doesn't tell us much. If you look at even a specific region of the brain, let's say the occipital lobe, which is the uh, region within the back of the brain that is necessary for most of visual processing within the brain. This region contains about 300 million neurons. So you can understand that 1,024 electrodes is not gonna be able to capture the complexity 
of the visual processing center. Someone who's watching this may assume the pig could sniff someone's hand and you could get a recording from those 1024 electrodes and understand the process of sniffing the hand. No, you can't. It's a lot more complicated than that because there's a lot more regions of the brains that are involved and each of those contains millions of neurons. The second thing and probably the thing that bugged me the most when I first heard about Neuralink are the lofty statements that are made with regards to what they can do. I'm not saying that they are not capable of happening. The way that they're stated doesn't give you an idea of how long it might take and how complex the process could be before we even get to that happening. My first experience was hearing Elon Musk talk about Neuralink on Joe Rogan. Within this interview, Elon Musk mentioned that he thought that this could be used to cure blindness, hearing loss, movement disabilities, psychiatric disorders such as anxiety and depression, and then also be able to generate superhuman cognition and then interface with technology. Whoa, that is a lot. With one microchip with 1024 electrode, that is an insane amount of things. I'm not saying that it's not capable of doing that, but let's talk about one specific example, which is blindness. A brief breakdown of the visual system is that you perceive information from the outer world that gets focused onto a region within the back of your eye, which is called the retina. This does almost all of the processing before it goes into the brain. Within that retina, there are rods and cones that you may have heard of that actually receive the light stimulus and that gets processed by a number of cells and then those cells actually send that stimulus to what's called retinal ganglion cells, RGCs. These cells are really important because they maintain that visual map and actually project those signals back into the brain. And then finally, those projections will reach into the occipital lobe within the back of your brain where the visual processing takes place within your brain. Now the occipital lobe actually has a map that matches to the map of retinal ganglion cells. What I mean by that is if you see a circle of expanding colors, you can actually see with an MRI what regions within the occipital lobe that get activated as they see those colors. And that shows us that there is actually a map that reflects what we see from the outer world, which is really cool. But the issue is magnetic resonance imaging, which is the MRI that's used to record this data, certainly can't get down to a cellular level. They capture cell signaling externally through looking at circulation, blood flow circulation. So we don't know exactly what cells become activated when you're viewing certain things. You certainly could not place a microchip with 1024 electrodes and attempt to recreate what you're seeing on this video by stimulating some neurons. There is a group at Stanford that is working on an artificial retina, which is within your eye. And there are about 1.2 million of those, but they're actually recording the cells that are signaling from the retinal ganglion cells. And they're trying to recreate that using artificial intelligence. Some of that artificial intelligence is really good, but it's very clearly still a work in progress. Now the microchip that I've seen designed from Elon Musk doesn't look like something that you would use as an artificial retina, but I could see how you could probably adapt that system. Still 1,024 electrodes may leave some to be desired considering even within retinal ganglion cells, you have about 1.5 million. So that's one example, vision. But then in addition, he's talked about hearing loss. Now there is actually already a system that works kind of like what he's proposing called the cochlear implant, where you put an implant with behind someone's ear, there's a microphone that picks up the environment and that actually stimulates the auditory nerve to provide signals into the brain for hearing. So maybe again, you could re-engineer the microchip in order to be an even better cochlear implant, but that's again, gonna be targeting a completely different region of the brain. Movement disorders are even further away in my opinion, but maybe for certain things they would work well. <sighs> Psychiatric disorders. Now, I think what he's talking about when he's talking about trying to cure psychiatric disorders is something called deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation or DBS is a really cool thing. It's 
primarily used in patients with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease often coincides with movement disorders where you see people that shake a lot. They have a very um, high tremor. And then in addition, sometimes you'll see large movements. A doctor accidentally found that if you stimulate a region within the brain using deep brain stimulation, he found this while they were doing surgery on a Parkinson's patient, it would stop the tremors or alleviate them to a large degree. They have since that study not only used this to alleviate the movement tremor that you see within Parkinson's patients, but they've also found that you can use it for other disorders, possibly severe depression, and maybe in the future, anxiety. That is possibly what Elon Musk is talking about when he's talking about using these microchips to cure psychiatric disorders. However, we still don't understand how that works at all. So we're gonna be stimulating regions of the brain without really understanding the full repercussions. The reason that I think scientists are most upset about this is as a scientist, you're trained to be as factual as possible. You do not want to mislead your reader in any way, shape or form. What Elon Musk says may be possible in 10, 50, 100 years, but that's a long time away and it is misleading to just make the statement that this microchip can do all of that when each one is gonna have to target a different region and each one is gonna have to be optimized and we still don't understand the ramifications. Now you understand hopefully why scientists are slightly perturbed by some of the statements that are made. Let's talk about why scientists love Neuralink. This is really impressive technology. A tiny little microchip that can interface with a computer. Also placing 1,024 electrodes using technology that will not really degrade or have any impact on the cells within your brain. Holy crap. <laughs> That's amazing. So yes, brain computer interface, pretty impressive. This technology has already been created, but most of brain computer interfaces are through external systems. So it could be a cap, it could be some kind of like visor type thing, and it receives signals externally from your brain. And then those signals are somehow interacting with some sort of computer interface. Neuralink would be unseen and much smaller. Elon Musk has mentioned that they have a monkey that is able to play computer games with its mind, but I really want to see that before I know exactly what that's capable of. The second reason that scientists love Neuralink is the exposure. Elon Musk is famous, like famous, famous. Like he breathes on something and it goes up three times in profit. Him talking about this type of neuroscience leads to a level of exposure that allows people to be interested in it. When people talk about things, they become interested in studying it, interested in possibly funding it, and all of that leads to progress in neuroscience. The third reason is probably more me than other scientists, but I think that something needs to be said for the vision. I think that Elon Musk is really great at taking things that he thinks are important for a future society. While they seem outside of our scope, he not only tries to accomplish them, he turns them into something that is marketable. In order to take the leap into this science, someone has to be willing to try it. And someone who has the capacity to possibly make it marketable is the perfect person for that job. That being said, I don't know that people should get brain surgery and be using electrodes to record what's going on in their brain or stimulate what's going on in their brain until we really understand what it's capable of and what are the ramifications. Already they're talking about possibly building a computer interface, brain computer interface for people who are paraplegic, which is invaluable. And yes, those people should absolutely get brain surgery for these microchips. Hopefully you guys have gotten a better understanding of why scientists are just not that excited about Neuralink and also why they kind of are. If you guys have any questions or comments or if you completely disagree with me, please let me know. I am one person with a limited scope and having different opinions is completely normal. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.